Welcome back, everybody, to By Faith Bible Studies podcast. Today, we got a new set. We upgraded <laughs> out of the brother's bedroom, my brother's bedroom, and into, you know, the guest house. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, happy to be here, happy to uh, do this podcast. Today, we are talking about friendships specifically christian friendships and we're going to detail uh our uh, me and kyle's experience with uh friends throughout our 16 years of life (laughs) thus far what we've experienced with friendships no doubt friendships are vital to a person's health just a person's uh, mental health spiritual health it's very important uh, to have good friends. So we're going to show you some of our successes in friendships and some of our uh, re- really times that we failed. And I f- we both failed big time in our friendships, but uh, hopefully you can learn from this and then we'll end with uh, some biblical stuff, biblical uh, friendship uh, stuff. That was just the rabbit over there, by the way. If you hear him, it's okay. So... Uh, give give us a little detail of your friendship experience throughout the years. Yeah, so yeah, going back to what you were talking about, if there's one thing that quarantine proved, it was that how important friendships are. Uh, to be together with someone and just have them encouraging you, and same with like you with them. Um, but in my experiences, I mean, growing up as a kid, we were all stupid pretty much. So. <laughs> I I wouldn't really want to count that as something to talk about, but going to like middle school, high school, um, my friendships have been mainly just focusing on whatever the latest thing is, and I mean, uh, like by that I mean that yeah, they're talking about whatever's going on in the world, or just you know like hey, what's going on? What's going on with you? You know things like that. Um, you don't really talk about the important things with your friends, at least in my experience, and that's an important thing, which we'll get into later. Um, but it's if it's not small talk, which it usually isn't, but still, uh, it's just we're just talking about random things usually, watching random stupid videos, <laughs> um, and just. You know, usually it's at school too. So you're talking about like the test, the homework, things like that. But you don't have that relationship of building each other up. And that's one main area where I think the world has really crept into Christianity. Is that even in the church, your friendships aren't usually about building the other person up. About like, what's going on with your family, you know, like, how's your relationship with your parents, things like that, it's more of, um, I don't know, like, did you see the game, or whatever, (laughs) um, for me personally, like, my friend has a lot of board games, and we love to play that, so I had to ask him, so are you bringing the board games to church, we're gonna play, (laughs) so it's just usually just random things to have fun, and it's, that's not necessarily bad, obviously, it's great to have fun, uh, with your friends, it's, it's a good thing that's a gift from God, right? But there are specific things that we have to do within friendships um, that we are commanded to do. Um, biblical friendships are a little different than that. Um, and that's basically what we're talking about. So, yeah. Yeah. I think with uh, teenage boys, uh, the things that uh, most teenage boys talk about is like w- when you get them in, in, a, in a room together, it's like uh, sports, like football or whatever. And it's video games. It's uh, school. Like, bro, how's school going, bro? Tests. I, I can't believe this teacher. She's she crazy, bro. Like that, that type of stuff. Uh, and j- j- just other things like you said that don't matter. Sure, it's fine to talk about that, and we we do it. There's no problem with just talking about little little things and having fun together, playing games together. But when it's all just messing around, when it's all just uh, trying to have a good time with your friends rather than 
wanting to actually deepen your relationship and most importantly with Christ. Uh, that I think that's uh, what we need to start building in uh, each other in building in, in the Christian uh, teenage society at church. So I'll just go through some of my experiences with friendships. So excluding and this is not like to make uh, excluding anyone in a bad way, but excluding friends who I've had just because they're friends from my parents' friends, like they're, they're the kids of my parents' friends, uh, excluding them, which I'm still friends with a lot of them. I have one friend, Reed. He's from preschool. So we went to preschool together. That's my longest running friend who I would say I made on my own. <laughs> it wasn't my parents, uh, like just having other friends who had babies and we, we like played together as l- little toddlers. Like, uh, th- this was a friend who I actually made on my own. Uh, so me and Reed still close today. And then Kyle is my second longest uh, running friend. Uh, uh, we we met in kindergarten uh, and been friends up and down and I'll talk about that throughout the years but now we're uh, close friends once again so going through elementary school I would cons- I would have considered most of the people in my class my friends most of the people like I I, I know them and I just thought. Yeah, I know them. I talk to them. I do school projects with them. I would consider them my friend. And then my close friends would be people who would come over for like a hangout and we 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 go like swimming or play basketball. That would be considered like uh like a closer friend. Um so that, that those were my friendships I'd say through elementary uh and I I remember in 6th grade which was middle school this was my last year at my old school, and it was a private Christian school. And uh, and I, I remember there was thirty new kids who came into the grade into sixth grade. Usually, it was only like max five. Like five kids would new kids would come into the grade, and everyone would they, they would like uh, come in and. We'd all become friends together with the new people. But when 30 people came in sixth grade in middle school, dropped in, uh, that really shook up the whole thing. I suddenly did not know everyone in my class. Uh, I, I knew, I've seen them, but I did not actually know their name. I was like, who are you talking about? I don't know this person. And that started to bother me uh, in, in my friendships. And uh I remember back then I would be kind of territorial my friends that like if you're hanging out with another group that's bad you can be in different groups but if you're hanging out with uh, those people who I don't like then that you, you, you're kind of uh, getting on my nerves and I, I'm kind of frustrated with that. that that's that's how friendships just work in middle school and it's it's one of the craziest dynamics that no one can ever figure out. No one can figure out the teenage social order. It's confusing. Who are the popular people? Who who uh, are the losers? Um, hint. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was one in middle school who really wanted to uh, be in the popular group. That was so important to me. I did not want to be a loser. I wanted to be known, popular. But in reality, I was just considered the Christian kid, the kid who didn't really talk that much in class. Uh, that, that was who I was uh, looked and that's how I was looked at by other people in my grade. And uh, so, so I, I remember I wanted to climb the social ladder. I had been friends with Kyle since kindergarten all the way through. And though we uh, don't have the common connection of sports, I really like sports. Kyle doesn't really care. I'm trying to get into it, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's okay. But I, I, I remember that's what started uh, shifting us apart. I don't actually remember why we were friends in kindergarten. 
no, I, I don't know. Like we, we were just okay. I, I sit next to you in class. Cool. I play with you on the playground. Cool. Like that that that's what defined a friend. Like very early in elementary, and I guess I just carried that over to middle school. But it was in middle school where we started to separate, and it wasn't like we we had any hate for each other. But it was more just like I, I I'm not really interested with, with hanging out with Kyle as much, and that is really disgusting of me, and I'm really. Uh, I'm frustrated at myself. I hate that time period when I just wa- uh, wanted to search for popularity. I wanted to search for my own uh, desires and get other people's approval rather than uh, building up uh, my friendship and growing that with someone who I've had since I was like six. So that's what happened in middle school. We started shifting apart. I was more interested in sports. He was more interested in politics. I don't know. I don't- <laughs> <laughs> that, that was another thing from the last episode the politics I thought that was stupid so I was just like I don't want to hang out with them as much it, yeah it was politics and then I just got my first iPad first piece of technology actually yes, in 6th grade I remember that and that's when I started getting into video games a little yes. bit and that just kind of took over it was bad Yeah, thank you for saying <laughs> that, that, yeah that was also it uh, <laughs> but um Either way, I, Kyle is my only like real friend from that period in Aww. elementary, <laughs> yeah, in middle school. Uh, yeah, he's my only real friend from that time period uh, that, that I still have today. I thought I would have all like probably thirty friends from from elementary and middle school to this day, but no, I only have one, and I hope that uh, continues just uh, with Kyle because the kids at my old school. Uh, were not the best influences. They, they were not the the best people to be hanging around. So I think it's good that the Lord kind of uh, used uh, that to separate me. And after sixth grade, I left to go one year at another private school, a little bit smaller. Doesn't mean that it was better. Uh, <laughs> and, and at that uh, private Christian school... Uh, there, I hated it. I was forced to go by my parents because uh, my brother and sister went to that private school and uh, they really liked it. So they assumed I would like it. It's a great, nice, small little school. It doesn't have the big, big effect of the other one. So now I'm at a smaller school and uh, the, pretty much the whole year I, I wanted to leave. I was planning, planning to be homeschooled the next year in eighth grade. This was seventh grade. In eighth grade, I was planning, how can I get out of this? How can I be homeschooled next year? Because that's how much I hated it. Did not like the teachers. The kids around were uh, poor influences. They were really bad influences. And and I I look back on that time and I, I was thinking, that was a terrible experience for me. Did I get anything out of it? Then I realized... You know what was actually worth it? What was actually worth going to that school for a whole year was that I picked up a, my one of my friends named Sam, who I still am friends with today. I picked up that one friend. And looking back, that actually made it worth it to go there. How much I dislike that school, I picked up a really important friend who I hope will be lifelong. So we can just see already right there that the Lord is using uh, tough experiences and he's using it to all, all to our good. He, he's using it to uh, promote uh, a better friendship. And I remember Sam, uh, we before I was saved, we would hang out and he's pretty much just, he might come on the podcast, who knows. Uh, but just so you guys can imagine him, just me better in every category. Like, he's more competitive than me. He's better at basketball than me, which was a big one. Way better in school. And, of course, I'm going to be jealous of that. Now, a little bit less jealous, but still, Sam's a really cool dude. And I think he's now slightly taller than me, (laughs) which is another thing that I'm like, but, uh... So uh, he, he just like uh, seems like he's excels in every little area, and um, but but what what I realized was that our differences really it it, it doesn't matter. 
Like he, uh, I'm, I'm more of a Calvinist. Uh, I come from a Reformed Calvinist point of view. He's more of an Arminius free will person. Does that mean that he's not a Christian? Of course not. But we're still able to converse. We're still able to do it without getting mad at each other or getting in heated debates. Um, when we do talk about something like that that we disagree on, it, it, it's still a, a good conversation. So... Uh, that, that that's just one way that the Lord uh, works. And fast forwarding now to high school, I'm in eighth grade. I was homeschooled ninth, tenth, and now eleventh. I'm homeschooled as well. So my main outlet for social uh, activities had to be church. It had to be uh, going to church and finding friends there because I did not really have friends back then. I was kind of insecure the fact that I didn't have friends at church. So in high school, I joined the high school ministry at Grace and I go there and I start making friends. I start making friends who I actually think now at this point are real friends. Well, they're not the last through the decades. I know that they're not fake. They're not being my friend for their own personal reasons. No, we have a great time together. We're able to talk together. We love each other because we all that one common bond in Christ. Now, that's what it's like with me and Kyle. Before, we didn't have the same interests, but now it doesn't really matter what interests we have. If our both of our goals is to honor our Lord, Jesus Christ, if that is our main goal in the friendship then we can always have something to rejoice and we can always have something to talk about because we're extremely excited in working to praise God and become more sanctified in Him. That's what a friendship should look at. But going back to what happened to us, so we kind of separated. I I obviously left the uh, school. He still remains at uh, the other private Christian school that I first went to. So... uh, he's still there, I leave. We don't really talk to each other for three or four years. Like, yeah, I I don't know. Would you have still considered uh, me as your friend? Because I think I would have said, yeah, I guess Kyle's my friend. Yeah, I definitely would have. I just didn't have a method to communicate with you. Cause yeah, I, yeah I, I didn't really have anyone's numbers, so I just couldn't really communicate with him. So. Yeah. But yeah, I would. But the problem with me was that I wasn't like extremely interested. I was like, yeah, if he wants to hang out, that's fine. But it's it, that, that was like the big problem. And I, I wasn't searching out trying to stay connected. It was more just, oh, now I left the school, cut it off. And uh, so, so we don't talk to each other for three or four years. And then out of the blue, he texts me. In ninth grade, I specifically remember this. This is the summer before ninth grade. We're, we're about to go into high school. And he texts me. He's like, hey, you want to come to my grandma's uh, country club pool? I remember that. And that was our first time hanging out since I left. Uh, I, I left the school and we basically parted our way. So it wasn't like obviously official uh, <laughs> leave you like bye uh, forever. <laughs> but uh, it was our first time actually coming back and hanging out. I, I kind of reluctantly said, okay, I haven't seen him in forever. I was like, oh, should I go? So we go and we, we uh, he, he was still into politics back then. I was just like, okay, this is interesting. But then we both realized, oh, we both kind of like filmmaking he's more into it than i but we both kind of can talk a little bit film uh making it and i i was like huh this is interesting and it was around that time uh i, I was still kind of just like oh, i don't know if i want to jump back into the friendship again but then we both got saved around that time in ninth grade and i remember you text me uh after that and he's, this is probably a couple months, this is a couple months into COVID. He's just like, hey, I heard that your church is the only one open <laughs> anywhere. And I'm just like, yeah. He's like, hey, do you mind if I come? And I was just like, oh, okay. And it was there when he started coming to youth group, he started coming to church. And I obviously knew that his parents were Christians that they went to church. But it was he started coming to my church and uh, hanging out at youth group. I was just like, huh, 
he actually now loves the Lord just like I do. That was our main problem before. Friendships that are not founded in Christ will not last. They will not last. And also, uh, another thing is that friendships that... Uh, that uh, if you don't have friendships that are biblical that are founded in Christ, then your own faith will probably not last because you need people to hold you accountable. You need people to keep you in the faith, and uh, and that's what causes so much apostasy is that people decide to leave. They decide to reject Christ because they don't have any true friends who want to help them through their problems, through their struggles. So that was like obviously a dark time in our relationship, not hanging out with each other, not talking. But the fact that the Lord was able to bring us back together, now that is God's sovereign providence that he brings us back. And now we're very close friends once again. So that's a great, great blessing. So, Yeah, I, I thought it was very interesting that we both had very similar stories for coming to Christ and like yeah. things like that. That was pretty cool for me to to realize, but um, yeah. Should we get into the verses? Yeah. Okay. So um, I've got a couple of verses, and then I'm gonna get into really what it is to uh, be a Christian to for Christian friendships. Um, so a couple of verses I got. First uh, Thessalonians five eleven. Uh, it says, therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, just as in fact you are doing. Um, so yeah, we gotta build each other up, and that's a kind of a cliche, but we'll get into that later. Yeah, so we gotta build each other up, which is, uh, which basically means that uh, when you're both Christians, right? It's like iron sharpens iron, right? So you both talk about uh, what's going on, right, with each other, and help each other out. Um, 1 Corinthians 15.33, do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character, right? So that's basically more of advice for how to choose friends. Like, don't choose bad friends. Choose uh, Christian friends, right? Because you might think, oh, I I don't see anyone else that I could be friends with. But still, like, they will corrupt your character. Um, Yeah, one thing about that. I think as Christians, and uh, sometimes we feel like we're kind of cool Christians, which is okay. But a lot of times we see our our own friends at at church and we're just like, yeah, they're they're a bit too Christian for me. They act a a bit too Christian and, uh, and, and you might feel the tendency to go and pick friends more from the world who live a more worldly lifestyle. But like that verse says, that's not really a wise thing to do. Yes, you can still have friends in the world, but is your main friend group is your main base of people who build you up who are close with you who hold you accountable are they christians are they people who also love christ are they in the church who you are able to see every week that's what's important so yeah um and another verse that goes with that is proverbs 22 24 to 25 do not make friends with a hot-tempered person do not associate with one easily angered or you may learn their ways and get yourself ensnared. So, like I said, it's going back with the uh, other verse, um, but more it's being more specific, right? Just don't be friends with someone who's easily angry because that will also uh, not go well for you. Um, and so getting into the purpose of Christian friendship, uh, friendships, Ecclesiastes 4.10, if either of them falls down, one can help the other up, um, but pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. Right, so one of the purposes for Christian friendships is if one falls, right, uh, like whether it's into sin or with questions about Christianity, whatever it is, the other person can help them up, can help them to keep going. Um, uh, Psalm 133, verse 1, how good and pleasant is it when God's people live together in unity? So that's another thing, be uh, one in unity for Christ. That's another thing. It's you have to be united for the sake of Christ uh, with each other. Um, Romans twelve ten. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. Right. This this ties back into the other command of like love your neighbors as yourself and consider each other as greater than yourself. Um, but when each pe- when, when both the people in the friendship are caring about each other more than they care about themselves, 
can you imagine how powerful that would be? Like that would that can go really far. Um, and Proverbs seventeen seventeen is the last one. A friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for a time of adversity. So no matter what the person's going through, like even if you like maybe don't want to listen to them right now, or you don't want to talk or whatever, you're commanded to love at all times, like to give them your attention, like when they need it, right? Um, and to be honest, and that's that kind of goes into the next part, which is the cliches, right? There's there's always cliches, and speak. I, I I have a rant about that, but I'm not gonna. <laughs> I'm not gonna do that this episode. Um, but like the cliches are like, uh, just be honest, you know, build each other up, like I was saying, um, and just uh, love each other unconditionally. And those are true, obviously, right? Uh, yes. But I think there's two vital things that everyone misses, and those are that uh, biblical friendship is where two people help each other with sharing the gospel. We're called to go out and share the gospel still. It doesn't matter if you're by yourself with a friend or with like a partner, right? It, in, in all of those situations, you're commanded to go out um, and share the gospel. And um, yeah, and the next part is keep each other alive, which basically means saved. And uh, the reason I said alive, well, I mean, it was John Piper, but I really like that he uh, said that because... Uh, Instead of just saying saved, he's saying spiritually alive. And that's that gives it more depth than just saying saved, right? Because you can be spiritually, like, kind of lukewarm and still be saved, right? Because you're just going through, a, you know, a trial or whatever. But to be spiritually alive and thriving, that's another thing. And that's what friendships are supposed to be, is you help each other share the gospel. And then with the gospel, you apply it to yourselves and keep each other safe. So, yeah. Yeah, those are excellent verses uh, right there. So um, I, th- I think another thing with, uh, with having Christian friendships is that you, you need to uh, focus and, and kind of have a reason why you're friends. It can't just be because like you see each other on at church or, or you go to the same school and you sit together in class or you play video games together. It, 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 it's got to be more like I see qualities in you that are worth investing in, that are worth uh, pouring myself into and, and really uh, helping you and you hopefully helping me grow in faith. And when you have a Christian brother or sister who can uh, do that for you, it changes your life. It changes really your perspective on how you view your relationship with Christ because you see that how much Christ loved you, you can then go and pour yourself that with that same love into your friend into those around you uh, who who actually also care for you. You need to have someone who has a caring spirit, someone who actually wants to uh, help you and who actually cares about what's going on uh, with, with, with your life. A lot of people just don't care. They do not uh, want to hear what's in your life. They want to talk about themselves. I want to talk about myself and how I am uh, dealing with this and that. And that's okay to talk about yourself and and, uh, and to just open up your life to uh, another person, to your friend. But really, your, your friendship should be based on uh, serving the other person, to, uh, to ask them what is going on in your life, what are your struggles, like, what is your thought life like? That that's a big question. What 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 preoccupies your mind, and uh, and those type of things actually makes a friendship work. And looking for important qualities, important biblical qualities that are pointed out in those verses. So that's that's what we uh, recommend. And obviously, we're not the model friendship and uh, hanging out because we've already had so many problems. But we know that the problems in the past, at least in my own heart and in your heart as well, uh, the Lord is able to heal them. 
he's able to heal the the wounds that are created and the fact that he was able to bring us back together as friends and now we we do this podcast together and, and we we go to church together that's such a huge blessing that's such a huge gift that the lord has given us and uh and that he was able to bring us back is beyond my comprehension that uh god was merciful enough to after uh i wasn't specifically like mistreating kyle it's just like i don't want to talk to him as much i don't want to hang out as much because maybe he's boring or something (laughs) but that's not what you should be looking for in a friendship it should not be hey i'm not getting out the, the same excitement with this person i'm i'm not when we hang out we're we're, we're not uh having as good of a time together that should not be your goal in uh in trying to have a good time for yourself it should be making sure the other person is having a good time when they hang around you and, and that you are giving them something uh, that that they can use for their own life. That that you're giving uh, advice to them. I think you need better friends who hold you in check, who hold your behavior in check, and they they're willing to call you out. Hey, uh, you, you shouldn't really be acting like that. You're you're acting kind of rude, and that really hurts. Uh, that 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 hurts so much when, especially your close friend. Who you call your uh, like your your best friend or your homie, like you, you uh, it really hurts when they call you out. You're just like, what? I I I, I thought you you you're, we're on the same page. I thought we're like close friends, but uh, you need someone who is willing to do that, and you yourself need to be able to accept uh, such uh, admonishing and. Uh, such criticism and t- when they tell you hey calm down or don't do this or you need to start doing this that's when you need to listen uh, I think it says in the Proverbs uh, I'm not quoting it but it basically just says that uh, that those who can take uh, who, who can be teach who, who are teachable Those people are wise, but those who reject teaching, who reject advice, they're fools. And this, you want friends who will give you advice, who will give you uh, good, uh, solid criticism uh, about your life, and uh, that that's what you also need to be looking for. So, of course, always grounded in Christ, but. These other things are also vital in having a healthy friendship, putting the other first, that type of thing. And also Philippians 2, uh, key verse for any relationship, how you can look at other people as more significant than yourself is how Christ looked at uh, looked, looked at the cross and was willing to go and die for sinners, that he was willing to to, to be humbled to the point of death, even death on a cross. That example of humility, you can practice the same thing because of that in Christ. You can do that. So, yeah, that's the advice that I got for that. Anything else? And I, I've i seen my uh, peers at school watching uh, some people, you know, like Danny Duncan. If you don't know who that is, you can look him up real quick. He just does a whole bunch of crazy stuff. I wouldn't recommend like watching him that much because you know then that's a bad influence on you. But I just I, I was surprised by what my peers were actually watching, and then it just all made sense to me when I'm like, oh wait, they're watching the stuff and they're acting like this. Hmm. Like it, it really does happen like that. So yeah, yeah, that's that's a good point. Um, whatever the social trend is, obviously. Because most are not believers, most are still living in sin. It's going to be sinful, but it's interesting how, uh, in what form will it take? What form will the culture promote sin? Um, that's uh, one example of it. So, uh, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed us uh, detailing our uh, experiences with different friendships. Um, and I hope you got a lot out of this. Uh, we always enjoy filming these podcasts for you. 
uh, tune in next week and in the weeks uh, following because hopefully, I'm not actually 100% sure, but hopefully we'll get some uh, guests on. We'll get some other homies of mine on here uh, to have them give some of their uh, excellent excellent advice so thanks so much for watching and we'll catch you guys in the next one cool